I'm going to explain to you guys about the ATP synthesis by chemiosmosis. Shown here is the figure of thylakoid. Okay, the thylakoid are enclosed within a thylakoid membrane. Okay, these are the thylakoid membrane. And the spaces within the thylakoid here is called thylakoid lumen or thylakoid space. And the fluid surrounding the thylakoid is stroma. Light dependent reaction occurs in thylakoid while Kevin cycle occurs in stroma. The other substance that is shown here is proton or hydrogen ion. The proton are symbolized as the gray circle here. From the figure that is shown here, it tells us that there are a lot of concentration of proton within the thylakoid lumen compared to stroma. So this is important because it will contribute to the production of ATP later by chemiosmosis. Okay, let's go through the text here. Okay, uh, we know that uh, during light dependent reaction, the electron will move down through the electron transport chain, either through non-cyclic electron transport or cyclic electron transport. Okay, as the electron moves down the electron transport chain, energy will be released. What is the use of that energy? The energy will be used to pump protons, okay, to pump protons. But from which region to which region? From stroma into the thylakoid lumen. Because they use the word pump here. Pump meaning active transport. So active transport means it tells us that it, the movement of proton is from lower concentration gradient to higher concentration gradient. In this case, it is from stroma to thylakoid lumen. Okay, so it creates a, a proton gradient here across the thylakoid membrane, whereas there is a lot of a proton inside the thylakoid lumen. So what happens after that? Proton will diffuse from thylakoid lumen back to the stroma. Okay, it will diffuse. Can you see this? They reduce the word diffuse. It is a passive transport from thylakoid lumen back to the stroma. However, it diffuse uh, through an enzyme called ATP synthase. And after this, ATP synthase will catalyze the photophosphorylation of ADP to form ATP. Okay, why, that is, why does it being called as photophosphorylation? Because the synthesis of ATP is coupled by the electron transport that is energized by light energy from the sun. So this is the detailed look of electron transport and chemiosmosis. That's been found here, embedded at the thylakoid membrane, are the photosystem, both photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Other than that, we can see the existence of electron carriers that will be plastoquinone or PQ, cytochrome complex or site C, plastocyanin or PC, and ferredoxine or FD. Other than that, we can found another type of enzyme which is ATP synthase, which also embedded at the thylakoid membrane. So we can uh, divide or label the region that can we can find in this diagram here. For example, this is stroma. Okay, stroma. And uh, the space within the thylakoid is known as thylakoid space or thylakoid lumen. All right. And we can see here that within the thylakoid space, there are a lot of hydrogen ion compared to the stroma. Okay, what happens here? Electron we travels along the ETC. Electrons that were excited from both photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. If let's say we are discussing about non-cyclic electron transport. But cyclic electron transport also happens here at the thylakoid membrane. Okay, uh, the electron carriers will carry the electron and they will become alternately reduced and oxidized as they accept and donate the electron. The transfer of electron along the electron transport chain is shown here by the yellow arrow. Okay, by the yellow arrow. Energy will be released when the electron move 
along the electron transport chain and this energy will be used to pump proton from stroma into the thylakoid space or thylakoid lumen through cytochrome complex and therefore thylakoid space or thylakoid lumen will have high hydrogen ion concentration as compared to stroma other than that during photolysis of water that release hydrogen ion it will also contribute to the high hydrogen ion or proton concentration within the thylakoid space this will create a proton gradient across the thylakoid membrane hydrogen ion then will diffuse back into the stroma through ATP synthase in the thylakoid membrane. Okay, when the hydrogen flows or moves through the ATP synthase, it will generate ATP. Why? When it diffuses down the ATP synthase, it will release energy. Alright, so the energy is used to phosphorylate ADP to become ATP. For every four protons that move through ATP synthase, one molecule of ATP is synthesized. The mechanism by which the phosphorylation of ADP is coupled to diffusion down a proton gradient is called chemiosmosis. Shown here in the table is the comparison of chemiosmosis that occurs both in chloroplast and mitochondria. Basically, both organelles will generate ATP by chemiosmosis. For the difference, in chloroplast, the light energy will be converted into chemical energy of ATP. However, for mitochondria, chemical energy from food will be used to produce ATP. In chloroplast, proton will be pumped into thylakoid space from stroma. And then, it will diffuse back into the stroma through ATP synthase. This will trigger the synthesis of ATP in the stroma. For mitochondria, the proton will be pumped into intermembrane space from mitochondrial matrix. And then, it will diffuse back into the mitochondrial matrix through ATP synthase. The energy release will be used to produce ATP in the matrix. So this is the comparison of chemiosmosis that occurs in both chloroplasts in terms of similarities and the difference in terms of in which form does the energy will be converted and the spatial organization. This is the figure to show the comparison of chemiosmosis that occurs both in mitochondria and chloroplasts in terms of their spatial organization. For mitochondria, we can see here the intermembrane space, inner membrane, and also matrix. And for chloroplasts, they show us the thylakoid space or thylakoid lumen, thylakoid membrane, and also stroma. Found embedded at the membrane is the electron transport chain, together with the ATP synthase, which involved in chemiosmosis. In mitochondria, the proton will be pumped from matrix to the intermembrane space and creates the proton gradient across the membrane. However, for chloroplasts, the proton will be pumped from stroma into the thylakoid space. Later, in mitochondria, the proton will diffuse through the ATP synthase from intermembrane space back to the matrix. It will release energy which triggers the phosphorylation of ADP into ATP. For chloroplasts, the proton will diffuse through ATP synthase from thylakoid space to the stroma, which releases energy to triggers the synthesis of ATP by chemiosmosis. That's all everyone. I hope through my explanation, we give you understanding on the first stages of photosynthesis, which is light-dependent reaction, which involves both non-cyclic transport, electron transport, and cyclic electron transport. Thank you.